for joining us uh, on Ask Nurse Gina, our humor and aging. We do want to apologize because we have had some technical difficulties, but we're certainly ready to get started and, and hear more about humor and aging today. Um, with us, we have both uh, Brian Foster uh, and also Tommy and uh, <laughs> and Tommy is dressed with uh, his nice little hat on, Tommy Conley. Um, Tommy is going to uh, talk to us um, more about what he does and how he helps um, a lot of different people with humor and how he sees it as a therapeutic tool. So Tommy, I'm going to turn it over to you. Well, Gina, thank you very much uh, for having me on. Um, you know, the way I like to start out is that um, Proverbs um, 17.22 says that um, a cheerful heart is good medicine, but a um, bitter heart dries the bones. Mm -hmm. And humor is so important in everything that we do. Something that I use here is as, as a networker. I'm a professional comedian, actor, and author. And I have found that by rolling humor into what we do with um, with the elderly population and the staff of the people that we're trying to work with has been very successful for everybody. Wonderful. And, and we have found the same thing, um, you know, even with my background, particularly uh, seniors, um, whether they're in uh, home care or nursing home, uh, dementia care units, all of them really enjoy humor. And it seems to certainly lighten their mood. Um, they may not remember it if they have some type of dementia, but they really enjoy themselves, and that's what we're really looking for. Yeah, um, that's that's a perfect example. I the, the first time I went in to do comedy in a facility, um, I thought that a couple of the people might have aphasia. They were just not reacting at all. And uh, one of the um, skilled staff members said, you know, these people don't often family doesn't show so unfortunately some of them get dumped off it's just kind of the way it is and when I stopped and, and actually tried to put a smile on each one of their faces by the end of that first performance that woman who I thought who had a fascia was doing the polka with her walker <laughs> isn't that great so, okay. yeah so it's, it's so important right um, you know we at, at one point um, we had an individual who she just uh, she was just real frustrated and, and wasn't a very happy person but we found out that she loved I Love Lucy and so we got her all kinds of DVDs of I Love Lucy and she just I mean she howled she laughed so hard that I could hear her all the way down the hall um, <laughs> you know, so it, it was wonderful yeah well who can't laugh at the part when they're trying to get all those chocolates in their mouth I, I mean, know at the same time <laughs> I know that's true so uh, Brian uh, would you mind Fine. Yeah, tell us tell us a little bit about how um, you met Tommy and and um, how you decided you know he was the right person for first light home care uh, in the, there in Naperville. Yes, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Brian may have a uh, Brian. We can't hear you. Well, I can insert the words. Tommy is an extremely great guy. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the other thing he did tell me, Tommy, since we can't hear Brian, I'm sorry, Brian, we can't I hear you. I think I'm on now. I was muted. Oh, okay. Oh, now tell us. Ah, well, you know, my wife and I, we enjoy uh, getting out locally to uh, go to a couple of the um, storytelling events or coffee shops, and we uh, were able to see an advertisement that uh, going on at the American Legion Post here locally was a, a show and a local comedian that was for a good cause um, to help uh, recovery and um, addiction, and it was a book signing going on, and, and lo and behold, it was Tommy Conley, and so my wife and I, we went out to dinner at the American Legion, went, met some great people, and uh, had a fun an entertaining evening and we ended up buying a book um, you. and you know, Tommy signed it he shared a little bit of his story and a couple of months later I um, ran an ad and was looking for someone really special and um, Tommy walked into the door and said um, you know my ad was called frustrated and dreaming and Tommy just told me he dream no more I'm here you know, uh, there you have it 
So that, that was our funny. story. So Tommy, tell us. Uh, go ahead and tell us the name of your book. Um, the name of my book is called Soul Parole: Making Peace with My Mind, God, and Myself. Available on Amazon and Kindle. I wrote it with um, Tom Dreesen and David Brenner, and it recounts um, my journey of 28 years of um, alcoholism and undiagnosed bipolar depression, and my um, my father's death and moving into um, facilitated care, my experience with home care, and then eventually with hospice, and then moving into um, TV, film, and comedy, and it's kind of the opposite Hollywood story. This is, uh, I started out rough, and there's a happy ending as opposed to I was on top of the world and then kind of slid from there. So people relate to a lot um, when I talk about it in the homes because we all have fears, whether, you know, you can plug in fear, you know, and, you know, my word might be alcohol, but there's other people who have, you know, relationship problems. We all have fears and things that prevent us from fulfilling our destiny or, or being the best that we can be. And that's how I'm able to bring that to the table with, with our senior population. That's wonderful. And, and don't you think um, humor, well, and of course, from your viewpoint and the fact that, you know, you have gone through, um, you know, the, the trauma, I'm going to call it, that you went through, don't, don't you find that humor is one of those very basic foundational type of things where everyone seems to relate to it. I, I, I haven't really found anyone who doesn't relate to humor. So, uh, you know, give me a little bit of how um, how you use humor with with uh, seniors or, or whoever. Well, the, the, the first thing I would, would say is that, um, you know, when, when you meet a person, you're going to have one of three impressions, okay? You're going to either have a great impression, you're going to have a bad impression, or you're going to have no impression. Okay, and this can be in any field that you're dealing with. So when, when we walk into a facility or a doctor's office or whoever we're trying to work with, um, if they know me as the funny guy, that's an instant bright spot in their day. Okay, and then when I'm walking around in a facility, they remember the funny guy. You can also be remembered as, oh my gosh, who's that guy? I don't even know who he is. He has no personality. Or, oh my gosh, I can't stand to do business with that guy. Um, Tom Dreesen, the greatest um, advice he gave to me when I started out in comedy, and it was the exact same advice that Carl Reiner gave him um, when he was going to do the Tonight Show for the very first time, is show people your pain. So maybe by me showing my my pains and and you know um, my undiagnosed uh, depression, when you show people your humanity. Um, and, and you can laugh about it, it makes them, A, relate to you because you're sharing your pain, um, your, your human side, you're not just somebody there um, as a business guy trying to get business done, you genuinely care, and then they're more willing to loosen up and relax because they can relate to some of the things that you've gone through. Yeah, absolutely, I, I would agree. You know, it's one of those... Um, personal stories that you're able to then have people relate to to you. Um, give me a little bit of an example if you can of, of how you um, how you do the humor with people. Well, I mean what what do you say if we're sitting here as a group of um, individuals and um, I'm allowed to say I'm a senior because I'm 61 so I am a senior you know um, just try to Give us a little bit of humor and how you how you use it. Oh, using humor on the spot. That's my favorite. Um, well, um, the one that I can think of the most recently is I was watching a uh, exercise program. I've, I've been watching a lot of late night infomercials, and uh, I watch two or three a night. And I, I really don't want to exercise, but my eyes look tight, don't they? <laughs> they do. And um, then I saw another infomercial that said men lose half of their testosterone by the time they reach 50. <laughs> and that made me really mad, so I took a bubble bath and lit some candles. <laughs> so, you know, in my humor, it's all clean and it's about me and it, and it makes fun of me and it, and it talks about the challenges that I go through. And, and the way that I kind of spin that around is, is that we all have things. And we all have gifts, 
and that you know when I'm in a when I'm in an environment, uh, particularly when I do a show, I do you know 15 or 20 minutes of comedy, and then I and then I talk about a, a little bit of of some of the obstacles that I've been through, but I talk about that you know my my angle not my angle that sounds terrible my gift is is humor, so. Um, you know, there was a lady there who knitted doilies and shared them with people. Every single person has gifts, but we tend to minimalize them or, or think that they're not significant. But what you can bring to the table in any situation is unique. That's why God created us the way we are. We're all different. We all have different gifts. And I, and I encourage them to, whether it be sharing stories or sharing laughter or sharing cookie recipes or, or whatever it is, share your gifts because if you make one person smile a day, you're adding to their health and well-being. It, yeah. And it makes you feel great on top of it. So. Yeah, and as a nurse, I can tell you, it, it really uh, it lowers people's blood pressure. Um, mm -hmm. It also lowers their heart rate. Mm -hmm. It also helps them to breathe better. And when you're laughing, you're exercising all of those wonderful muscles, whether uh, whether it's the, the chest muscles to help you breathe or whether it's your heart, you're, you're exercising all of those. And that's just an added benefit. And of course, your eyes do look really good from um, watching all those exercise <laughs> videos. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about that, that small glass of water that you have there. Well, I, I, you know, I did mention I have a drinking problem. You know, I, I, I just <laughs> never got rid of the glass. <laughs> That is hilarious. I told my wife, I, you know what, I'll, I'll quit drinking. I'm just going to have one per night. Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> just one per night. Uh, do you, do you um, use props? You know what, I really, I, I really don't use props. Now, I, I will tell you some of the things that were that, that I've moved into. Um, I'm sorry, that's my agent. Um, <laughs> what I, you know what, I... I I started out just doing the comedy. Now I'm working on a show called The Golden Age of Hollywood because with that I can I talk about the golden age of Hollywood and some of the TV shows and movies that I'm in now. So um, I can continue to grow with this humor, smiling, positive feeling thing just by introducing new subjects to the population. So literally I think I did seven performances last month and, and I've got four or five coming up this month. But I really want people to understand that um, you don't have to be a comedian to do what I do. You know, it, you can go in and say, "Hey, listen, I want to talk about my trip to Spain," and maybe they bring in a few props about Spain and um, facilities and independent living communities and, and and assisted living communities. They're starving for new enrichment things beyond the traditional bingo, etc. So it is such a wide open door when you come in and. When your heart's in the right spot, um, opportunity opens up from your desire just to make happiness uh, a part of what we are about. Because then first light becomes associated with happiness and smiles, and, and the business opportunities can open up from there. It's a beautiful thing. Uh, you're absolutely right. It is a beautiful thing. And, and you know, uh, to your point, we, we have um, a franchise owner who is down in Florida, uh, Steve Ratner, and he took um, our Who I Am booklet to a support group um, for those who have family members who have dementia. And they began to look through some of the questions. And from what I understand, they, they started laughing, which is very unusual for this group and such a relief for them because they were telling stories about their loved ones, uh, talking about their, the nicknames that they had for one another and then talking about the different trips they went on um, and, and what people did for a living. So it was a common ground but it wasn't always talking, you know, it was talking about something new and they just, the stories is what really made made it so very interesting and funny and and a good uh, a really good support group meeting and that's you know and when we go in and you know we always talk about relationships and, and we, we we talk about it as you know after you have been someplace or met any human along the way you're gonna have some sort of relationship but when you share who you are and it's coming from your heart even if it's pain particularly pain people are more drawn to you because they see that you're genuine and you're willing to put your heart out on, on a stick 
and let them see. Because when I do talk, um, I do speak of, of the difficulties that I went through and, and the growth I went through when my father had his stroke and I was able to take care of him. And I have a few jokes uh, about, you know, um, you know, when I was a little guy, you know, my father took care of my little bottom. And when he got a little older, I took care of his big bottom. <laughs> so, um, and people can relate to that. And it, and it, and it can take subjects that, that are sometimes difficult mm -hmm. or, um, you know, kind of difficult to dance around. And if you make them funny but not disrespe uh, disrespectful, people... Um, really appreciate that because they, they want to laugh and they want to release and they don't want to feel ostracized or stigmatized because of different things that they have. So when you share things that you have in your family or that you've experienced yourself, they automatically let down their guard and are more open to talking to you because they know you're real. And, and that's very important too because they are surrounded by professionals and the professionals act that sometimes too professional you know they're, they're not um, they're not such that they're willing to share stories or willing to involve themselves in people's lives um, and, and part of that is a, a time from a time standpoint but I can tell you some of the best doctors and nurses that I have ever run into are those who can use humor even while they're providing care so um, and it's it's not that hard to do, and it's not that hard to help people, you know, relate to one another. Just like you said, you know, the taking care of little bottoms and big bottoms is is really a great a great way just to uh, help people relax. Yeah, and 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 when you realize the nature, you know, caregivers and and case managers and and nursing directors and nurses, what we deal with on it or what they deal with on a daily basis is, is grueling and then there's administration and bureaucracy so when you're a light-hearted positive person and and you you know you're going to see Judy over at, at at one of the homes and Judy sees your name come up on the list she may have had the most rotten day she might have lost a patient there might have been seven crises and for them to take five minutes with a smiling face they really look forward to that yes, because they they're not dealing with another talking head who's just blurting out complaints and or rules and regulations and and it they love to see you because they know it's going to be fun when you get there that's right and that they, that you're a person that uh, you can they can share with you know share some of uh, some of their stories I'm sure that you've even experienced where people will tell you about their very bad day um, and you've probably helped them overcome that yeah, you know, and that's that's the key. You half half of good speaking is 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 that you did twice as good a listening when you started. Right. And um, you know, I, I spend time and invariably because I I make fun of my marriage and my wife and making fun of me and my kids and you know, I pick on myself, but then people always have a story that they relate. And I take time, I, I tell some traditional Irish jokes and stuff like that. Um, but even just when I'm with staff, you know. I sit and I want to hear their stories and then their mood gets lightened when they can relate to something that you're talking about or you're just going back and forth and, and talking about common ground of how rotten, how rotten of a day was it? It was so <laughs> rotten that, you know, and, and it just, it makes, it makes for a really pleasant experience and it opens up and, and, and lets people feel that they can talk to you on a personal and a professional level. You know, we used to do um, a little skit at some of the nurse conferences you know, that, that started out, you know you're a nurse if, and, uh, and, and you know, it, just all kinds of different things. You know you're a nurse if you don't get to go to the bathroom from 5 a.m. until 5 p.m. Um, and yet you're emptying all kinds of urinals and bedpans. <laughs> Right. You know, it's just that type of thing, and, and that's yeah. the that's the good kind of humor that you want to uh, you, you want to portray. So, are you able to use this with some of um, the networking that, that you do? Yes, absolutely. I use it in a lot of the networking because, um, as I mentioned in my book, um, all the proceeds go to charity. And um, right now, our local office is working on, on, a, on a foundation where, where it's going to go towards that. But the book, um, it goes towards um, homeless, addiction, and mental health facilities here in, in our area. 
So I also extend my comedy or, or storytelling or whatever it is to all of the other groups that I work with. Um, I'm, there's a, a, a lady who's the marketing director for a really large um, assisted and independent living home who I'm going to work, uh, do something for her association's fundraiser. And so I, I lend those skills to other people. Um, and I, I don't charge anything for that. I, this is my gift from God, and I'm, I'm grateful to be alive after what I've been through. So it's great for networking because people, people like to laugh no matter what arena you're in. I mean, it's not very appropriate if you're at it, you know, what, you know, sometimes it's not appropriate. Usually it is. But it makes any networking opportunity, again, just like when you walk into a nursing office. If I walk in and I'm funny um, in an appropriate spot, they're going to remember the funny guy before the, hi, my name's Tom. Here's my brochure. I'm from First Light. We are better than everybody else in the world. <laughs> All of our people are happy, happy, happy. So, so if I can walk in, and I am, I am the face of First Light. So when I walk in with a happy face, am I going to say, wow, I want this guy to work with my people, and wow, I want these, this guy to work with my family, because if this is what First Light is like, their heart is exactly the way my heart is feeling about finding care or that I can trust them with care, because I take my job very seriously, mm -hmm. but I can deliver it along the way with a smile and, and, and make people feel like, wow, I'm, I feel great about this company instead of, you know, just... Would you like another pen? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and it changes it from that very drone and somewhat pessimistic to such an optimist. And and that's really part of what First Light is. It's just, you know, we're very optimistic that we're, we're able to keep people in their own homes where they want to stay, help them, you know, with all types of, of uh, care and different services. So it, it really is, we're trying to change the world a little bit at a time. You know, that's the only way that you can. But maintain that optimism always. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, um, I'd like to add, you know, add a, a little sure. comment here if I could. I, you know, I had the experience now of, of being able to go out and work with Tommy and um, going into the various facilities. And, you know, it's... Uh, amazing to see him walk in and most of them have a common area up front or, or an area where they're sitting or they're visiting or just outside the um, the uh, cafeteria area for food and they're gathering and they just light up when they see him and uh, you know, Tommy's here and he gets to sit down and, and you know it's hard for him to go on if he was there for a plan meeting it's hard for him to get out because they, they are just so engaged um, that that he's there and, and the smiles on their faces and it's like watching the home uh, family gathering um, the stories start coming and so it's a, it does it, it changes everything um, and having made calls and walking in for the for the first time we all know what that experience is like and then then when you watch Tommy go into these facilities and, and, and come back and just it changes the whole demeanor of the day for for me <laughs> but yeah. certainly for those that were visiting um, and it just it, it brings out the best in everybody. I mean, that's just what it is. When you're around people who are having fun and smiling and laughing and, and you're in a group like that, that group you want to come back to. Um, you know, I, and that's where you want to be. All of us are the, are the same. doesn't mean that we're not dealing well with, with problems and difficulties and issues in our life, but um, you, can, you can come above that when you got a smile on your face and you got somebody that's happy and that's willing to, to walk with you. I couldn't agree more. I, I couldn't agree more. That's that's absolutely true. Yeah, and, and, and the one thing that I really, for anybody who's watching this, I know it's going to come across their mind is, well, I'm not a comedian or, or you know, I'm not an actor. Or, or, you know, you're a human. You know, the, it, again, three people that we meet, you make me happy. I, I can't stand when you're here. And, oh, my gosh, I don't even know who you are. So you just to walk in and be relatable and, and be upbeat, even when you don't want to be. Then you, then you stop and before, before you walk into them and go, you know what, i got to put my smile on now because those people need smiles. And you don't have to. We all have the gift. Mine is just something that I've channeled specifically. But you can think of something every time you're there that's relatable and, and going to put smiles on those people's faces. And I've literally just asked um, what we can do, and 
Um, what we're rolling out here very shortly, and Brian, it's coming, I promise. We're just going to, is a pet program. And it was something that the, um, the facilities brought to me because it's a natural extension of the happiness, wellness, and it was a niche that, that wasn't being um, addressed in the facility. And they, the, the people liked me so much, and I'd gone nowhere, nowhere, nowhere. And then finally the administrator said, you know, do you do anything with pets? And, I'm, and I was, you know, I was, first of all, I thought they wanted me to, like, put a, a skirt on my dog and have her <laughs> toil a plate. I would have done that. But um, now they, once they come in and they see that I'm genuine and that I'm, real it's gotten me way beyond the normal five visits or, or whatever because they know my heart's in the right place so now they bring ideas to me and we create things together um, that because you're making up in heart time what you would normally do in time across a couple of months which that's vital but you can shorten that time by being relatable and someone that they know's heart is in the right spot Right, and, and just to make that point again, anybody can do this. Anybody can do anybody this. Anybody can do this. So, and one thing I do have to uh, share with you, Brian and Tommy, is uh, we've certainly enjoyed, you know, having both of you on uh, on this uh, Google Hangout. Um, I, I did want to also tell you that uh, a long time ago when I was director of nursing in a long-term care facility, the other thing we had besides, you know, the pets is we had a baby day. Um, where a lot of the staff um, or, uh, you know, we had not only their staff, but we would have other people to just bring in their children um, and whether they're babies or whether they were toddlers or five or seven years old, they just really enjoyed spending some time with young people. That That is a wonderful idea. Yeah. And that, that lends itself to, you know, I can't stand the saying, think outside the box. There's no box, okay? There's no box. So here somebody's going, wow, I've got, you know, my, my, my daughter needs help with my granddaughter today. You know what, wouldn't it be fun, you know, as long as she's not sick, of course, or something, to bring her along. People just love that. Mm -hmm. Something different. Be different. We, we spend so much time thinking that we have to do this over-the-top, complicated visit, and if you you can't think of six reasons to go back just in your car, then I, I don't know what to do. Call me because I'll I'll come over. <laughs> but yeah. but so much you you've got there's so much and people want to talk beyond the basic and and you're get your you're making the life easier on people um, by coming up with ideas and just being someone who they can say, can you help me figure out? Or can you help? I helped a, a facility find a, a magician the other day, and that's going to lead more business to more help for me down the road, maybe. But um, she was thrilled that I found that for her. So share your gifts, folks. You got them. Don't Absolutely. put them under a bushel basket. And one of my uh, one of my gifts is that I like to eat. Um, so we we always had we had a chocolate fountain, um, awesome. you know. So uh, I brought my gift. I like to eat, so I brought my gift of a chocolate fountain. So that that was a lot of fun. We will leave our address. Please forward your. Uh, <laughs> we would love for you to share our gift, your gift with our office. Okay. Isn't that fun? The chocolate fountain. Yeah. And, you know, it's simple. Yeah. Funny. And then everybody's talking, and it's not that complicated or difficult to pull off or a big investment. It's just simple, simple human relations. Yeah. Well, again, we don't have any questions um, that have been posted. I know. I <laughs> look at his face. Uh, but um, we really do appreciate both of you being on with us today and sharing some of the great insights that you've had as far as aging uh, and humor with aging. We, we do appreciate that. Thank you very much, Gina. Okay. Bye, everyone. God bless you guys. Go get them, tigers. <laughs>